Joining us now, Jack Wheeler, the arts consultant for the District School Board of Niagara, and Izzy Saranchuk. She is a Beamsville District Secondary School grade 12 student. Izzy, you participated in something called Art at Home. The teachers gave us a great opportunity to showcase some of the work that we've been doing at home during these challenging times um, and share them to everybody, not only the students, but parents and other teachers and principals as well. Jack, this sort of replaced the DSBN grad art show that usually takes place in the spring, is that correct? This was something that uh, we weren't expecting to have a formal art show uh, called Art at Home. Uh, this was just in, a, it started off as an attempt to collect some of the work that was being done at home by students. One piece led to another, and before we knew it, we had almost 100 pieces, so we thought that we would try conducting a, an online art show. In addition to the grad show, the grad show is coming in a couple of weeks, so we, no, we haven't, this isn't, it's not a replacement, it's in addition to. How did you go about collecting submissions? And did you, as the arts consultant, present a theme? Because I, I do notice that there are certain themes from each school. We worked with a team of teachers. We had the seven teachers that we were working with um, online. And we, were, we started literally just by constructing the website collaboratively. Um, not many of us knew very much about web design to begin with. So that was something that we had to do over Microsoft Teams. It wasn't very far into the process that we thought that it would be a richer learning experience because it was fairly authentic to invite some students into that process with us. So to that end, we invited four students to participate in that learning journey with us. So we were all learning together. Izzy, what was your experience like? It was really interesting seeing what the back end of something like this was. Usually it's just presented kind of on a silver platter to the students and we don't get to see all of the hard work that went into it, um, much more than just the art that we made. Um, and I really loved being involved with all of that and getting to share my input. What was, what was your take on some of the other student art that is involved in this display? I thought it was so wonderful to see all these different types of art style. Digital art is completely foreign to me, so some of the artwork just blew me away. Talking Head, if you visit the website, was one of my favorites, um, as well as my friend Alec Van Dongen does some amazing caricature art that I could never even dream of doing. Was it great to see the difference between the type of art that Beamsville produced versus the other six schools as well? It is. It's so interesting to compare projects and assignments that they were given compared to ours. All of them will have the same theme like color, but they'll have many different spins on it. And it's fun to see their assignments and even try it for yourself and see what you would have created if you had that teacher with that assignment. Was it difficult for you to stay motivated during the shutdown of the schools and to continue expressing your creativity artistically? I think it has been for a lot of people. I think uh, creating is very emotionally draining, um, which is something we're all struggling with right now. But I feel as though when we have an idea, it's, it's very important because we're pushing past all of that emotional burnout and we're creating something really meaningful that we really want to share in a time like this. And Jack, what a great idea to have the students have something to aim for, the fact that you know, not only are they creating art to get the credit in this course, but they can actually have their art submitted for this exhibit. Yeah, no, that's that's proved to be a real benefit for all of us. Like we want to take this opportunity to to thrive. We understand that we're faced with some obstacles and some new learning that we all have to kind of participate in. But we don't want to miss out on this opportunity to, you know, to keep learning to our maximum. And, and as I said, to find different ways that we can really thrive in this environment, given the, given the circumstances. You also planned an online opening for this exhibit. How did that go? Well, it was, again, that was lear a lot of learning for all of us. But with the help of the students and with the help of a really um, of a sizable team of teachers, we... We managed to coordinate that as well. It was our first attempt at a live opening that was digital, and we'll be looking to uh, do another one on June 23rd for our graduate art show. Moving forward, do you think that this is something that even once schools are open, students are back in the seats, that you may decide to do another one of these sometime in the future? 
Well, yeah, I think we've discovered this, sort of a silver lining through in this process. We found that there are um, some benefits that really sort of reveal themselves in terms of online learning and finding different ways to showcase student work and sh to showcase the some of the learning that the students are doing along the way and for teachers as well. So I think that there will be, there's a certainly room for this kind of online um, internet-based learning in terms of an art show, of course, yeah. Is it your plans for September? I do, I'm going to be attending Brock University for their studio arts program. Thank you for your time today.